and um, welcome again. Um, I'm going to do a quick revision video this morning based on the request that I've see, uh, received from uh, just a few students saying they needed me to look again at the DNA structure and protein synthesis. Many of them actually said I should do the protein synthesis but you know I have to pick it from the DNA structure uh, this is towards the GCSEs that's really really now around the corner but remember like I always say you need to keep positive and keep revising so a few questions that they, you can be asked about the DNA is in terms of the structure yeah so the DNA is a double helix structure so the DNA is a double helix all right is made up of two strands two backbones yeah two strands that are twisted together these are the two strands for um the number of exam boards they're they're not asked about the two strands but i'll just pop it there in case those of you that are doing the higher paper you find it on your paper this is made of sugar and phosphate group The phosphate group and they are connected by bases there are four basic bases that connect the two DNA strands together and a very easy way to remember is tigers are great cats so a always goes with T G always goes with C as so so G I'm just gonna pop the bases at random C T a, A, or T, and another A. So once you know the first strand, you can work out the complementary base strand. All right? So the C always goes with the G. So if this is a G, that's going to be a C. That's a C, so that's a G. T goes with A. A goes with T. T goes with A. And A goes with T. Now, that is the structure of the DNA. But just as a quick reminder... Of where the DNA is located because you can be asked that question in exam as well so typically the question could be that you should arrange the following in order now this is a typical GCSE question chromosome then um, nucleus DNA gene it could be in any order so you'll be asked to uh, arrange those in order. This is how you answer the question. I'm going to answer it by drawing the diagram. So if that is your cell, inside your cell, you have the nucleus. And on your, in your nucleus, you have the chromosome structure. You have 36 chromosomes in every human cell, 23 pairs actually. There's another video in which I'm going to talk about that the haploid, haploid and the diploid arrange, set, arrangement of the chromosome. All right? So on this, this is, will be your chromosome. Chromosome is there. And on your chromosome, you have your DNA double helix structure. So this is your DNA. So that is one. If I label them for you, two, three, four, and then if we're to pull out your DNA um, like so, and you lay it out, just like I did a minute ago, segments of your DNA make up your gene. So this could be the gene. So that would be number five. So if I was to answer that question, that would be number one. That would be number two. And that would be three. That would be four. And that would be five. All right? So that is the location of your DNA. So I have quickly looked at the DNA structure and its location. Because I'm posting this on YouTube, I'm a little bit fast because you can pause the video to look at it and you can ask me questions if you're not sure of any, any area. Now, the major function of the DNA, we know it holds your code for life, but in reality, what does that actually mean? It holds the code for creating proteins. Proteins are very, very important. If I give you an example of a typical protein, it's keratin. Keratin is the protein that codes for hair growth, which means if you don't have a production of keratin, your hair will be affected. All right? 
Now, proteins are very, very important. Enzymes are also protein. Just imagine an enzyme like amylase. If you did not have amylase, you couldn't break down carbohydrates. It means that when you eat your bread or your potato, it would not profit you anything. It would not be useful to your body. But because you have amylase present in your system, in your taste, in, in, your, in your saliva, for example, where digestion starts, then you have amylase breaking down carbohydrates to release the energy that you need. All right. So I'm going to look at how protein is synthesized or made from the DNA. Remember, we said the DNA is a double helix structure and it has um, bases. Now it has bases in the order of C to G and A to C. Now in the nucleus, there are two things that happen. So let's just imagine that this is the nucleus that's inside that massive cell. Your DNA is securely held in your nucleus because it holds the code for your life. It holds the code for protein synthesis. So it's secured in your nucleus. Now, there are two stages of protein synthesis. You have the transcription stage and the translation stage. I'll do the transcription stage first. At the translation transcription stage, by the way, if I just pause to say that this can be a six mark question. If you ask us a six mark question, what I'm explaining here would enable you to get six out of six. All right. So the first thing that happens is the DNA section that needs to uh, make the particular protein on zips. So the first thing that happens is DNA on zips. A student asked me and said, can we also say unwind? I said, yes, or open up. So that section open up opens up so we're going to concentrate on a section that we're going to use so let's say that this was your section or the code that you require for the particular protein that we want to synthesize by the way synthesize means um to synthesize means to make to create in biology now that would unzip so if this is the code for that particular um, DNA, for that particular, uh, or on that particular DNA structure that codes for the protein, that section will unwind and then a messenger RNA will be created. So there will be an mRNA. I'll tell you the difference between mRNA and DNA shortly. An mRNA strand forms. The way an mRNA uh, strand forms is by creating a complementary uh, strand to this code. So that is actually the transcription, like so. So this is a G, it would be a C. This is an A, it should be a T. One difference between um, DNA and RNA is rather than a T for the RNA, it is a U, all right? So this is an A, so it would be a U. A, it would be a U. G, it would be C, C, G, G, A, it would be a U, T, it would be an A, then G, C, um, U, and C. Now, that is the RNA strand. So, once this RNA strand is created, it will then leave the nucleus. leave the nucleus right it will come out of the nucleus now when that rna comes out of the nucleus remember this was the nucleus it goes into the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm the messenger rna does not just float about it doesn't float about it is held securely by a structure called the ribosome the ribosome holds the mrna in, in place, all right? So I can't remember the uh, specific one, but I'll just give you, because uh, in exam, once you're given the first strand, you should always be able to work out the other strand. So if that was the one, uh, the, the RNA that we, we, we got given, so let's say we have CC, um, A, we have U, A, U, we have G, C, G, for instance, this is the um, 
the ribosome is holding the mRNA in place. So for the proteins to form, you need to come, there has to be a connection of amino acids because amino acids are the block, building block for protein. So this is the stage of translation. Remember I told you that the protein synthesis happens in two stages. You have the transcription and you have the translation. So at the translation, mRNA is held in place by the ribosome. And then each amino acid is added according to the base.